Welcome back to the table, and despite the name of this game, we are not sinking here, but the game is We're Sinking. We're just going to announce We're Sinking and then hope that people... No, we're staying we were afloat saying. right here, at least long enough to tell you about this game. This is a new game from Ludimus Games, and it is a game where you're all pirates, mm -hmm. and as pirates, you're cutthroats, and the ship is, well... Sinking. Sinking. I mean, not just because, it's sinking because you're under attack by some crazy monster. Yes. But it, it is But it is sinking. It is sinking, and oh, one of two things might happen in this game. The ship might sink. Yeah. And if it does sink, you want to be the person with the fewest cards in your hand, because that's how you're going to win. However, if the ship doesn't sink, and of course throughout the game all the players are going to be doing things theoretically, mm -hmm to make sure the ship doesn't sink. And if, that, if that's the case, and if you defeat the monster before the ship sinks, then it's the one player who has the most treasure. And not the cards, but the highest value of treasure in their hands. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that kind of makes this game kind of hard to just, to put in one bucket. Because it's, it's not... <laughs> oh, I'd see what you did there. It's not really like a hidden trader game. Because your actions are all public, but your goals might be different. If you have very few cards, your goal is actually to kind of get the boat to sink and if you have the most treasure, your goal is to fight the monster and try to beat it. But if you're in the middle, you kind of have to decide what direction you want to go. And you can. You can teeter yeah. in one of a couple different directions. If you see that you're a little behind on treasures, maybe you want to tank the whole thing and have the ship sink. But everyone's going to know that once you start doing it. Because, like Ryan said, the actions are going to tell the tale of what you're trying to do to some degree. Yeah. So let's dive in, and I promise mm -hmm. that's the last pun. That's not pun. the last pun. I promise that's the last pun. And tell you what we have here on the table, because there's a lot of really cool components here. First, we've got the Kraken. This is one of a few different monsters that you can choose from. This is the easiest one. Yeah. Uh, they ratchet up, and in fact, they're going to be revealing a few more. But to show you right now, a few more that we have are the Sirens, the Skull Sayers. I like that one. And the Shark. Uh, these all behave a little bit differently. They have different uh, dedicated dice to them that you're going to use uh, when they attack. So it's going to give you not only increased difficulty, but quite a bit different flavor because some of these even have extra components and additional cards that are going to go into the deck and things like that. Yeah, so that's always set aside. So you're going to choose that before you start the game, of course. And the rest of the board here is basically the entire game. We do have our little player boards. Everyone gets their own unique character with a little bit of flavor text. However, they're not super asymmetric, except for the fact that in your starting deck, you do get one unique card. So everyone does have something that's a little special for them. Yeah. But you're going to assign these, you can draft them, you can place them out randomly, whatever. But besides that, the rest of the action of the game is all taking place right here on this action board where you're going to see all the different actions in the game, the different decks of cards, the level of your cargo hold, includes, including your water level limit, which is you know, what would sink your boat eventually if the water gets too high. Yeah. And this is your play area as well. Yeah, the ship is likely going to start sinking at the very least in the game. And we'll tell you a little bit about more how that works yeah. in a minute. You also have some dice here. There's a few different dice. You're going to have general uh, monster die and then specific monster die. And then all these gray dice are cannon dice. These are dice that you're going to use with the fire action to do damage, hopefully, yeah. to the monster and try to, to defeat it. Now, we've left the best thing to last here, yeah. and that is the ship. This is probably one of the coolest components. And when I saw this game being demoed at, I think, Origins earlier this year, this is what drew me to it. This is a cool little ship, and I'll show you, it comes apart in several different levels. Yeah. Not from the top down, but from the bottom up. Because as you take pieces off, the ship is going to look like it's disappearing further and further into the board as it sinks, which is a really cool feature in this game. Yeah, it is a really cool feature. And of course, the ship is going to sink, like we said, based on that cargo hold, uh, based on the water level of the cargo hold, based on the water cards that are coming up, based on the breaches that you're going to have. So there's a lot of different things that will cause your ship to sink. And it's your job as players to mitigate that sinking if you want. It's going to become very obvious if you're not really helping stop the sinking of the ship, right? Yeah, that is effectively what you're doing. Uh, I'll give you a brief overview of what you do in a round, but then we're really going to kind of get into the actions that you can take. At the beginning of each round, you're going to check the water level. You're going to see if it's reached sort of the threshold, if you yeah. will. And then things are going to get worse and you're going to have to go through a sinking phase. You can do that four times before the ship sinks. 
Then you're going to add some cards to the water level. You're going to add some cards to the treasure deck. And then you get really to the meat of the game, and that's where you're going to be choosing what action you're going to do. So once all the players survey the current situation, and like Ryan said, the water level could be getting high. There might be a lot of treasure floating around. And we might have some broken cannons, some breaches, and these breaches sort of impact negatively yeah. that water level. And then we might have some cannons all at the ready, ready to fire against the monster. But before that happens, that monster every single round is going to attack. Now, as you could have guessed, this is a fairly simple, straightforward process. You roll the monster's die and resolve them. Now, these dies are going to do a number of different things. The general die can do things like add more water to the water level. They can damage cannons. They can add more breaches to the ship. Mm -hmm. So it's at that point where you're like, okay, things just got bad. Now we have to decide what we want to do. So everyone picks up their dial, and there's a bit of a discussion at the table. This is where the lying might begin. Oh, this is def this is where the lying is <laughs> a huge part of it. Because, like we said, these are the four actions you can do. This bucket, plunder, patch, and fire. Each one of those four actions serves a critical role in helping one side or the other win the game. So when you're sitting around the table and you're looking at the number of water cards in the bucket column, if it's more than seven, you've got to know you, somebody has to come to the, to the bucket action. Somebody yeah. has to get that water out or else we're definitely going to sink. And so you need to talk about it. But the thing is, lying is a huge part because when you choose your action on this dial, you're going to place it face down in the column that you're claiming to contribute to. Claiming. Claiming, that's, that's, that's the key part. the operative phrase here, because when you place it down, once everyone is placed down, there's a step where we reveal all of them. And after that, and this is a very important process, you look for the liars. Uh -huh. And when you look for the liars, you're gonna go left to right and reveal, well, all of them are gonna be revealed, but you're going to look for the ones that don't match the action that above them. So, for instance, and you can choose to loot or plunder, or you could choose another action yeah. if you're just wanting to sort of psych people out and say, yeah. oh, I've got the water under control, right. everyone. Nobody needs, nobody needs to come over here. Don't worry about uh -huh. it. But every liar is going to then go to their appropriate column and go to the bottom of the sort of turn order, if you will. So if someone right. had already placed in a column, you're going to go behind them. And that turn order is very important in how you resolve this. And then after that is done, and of course, everyone's taken note who lied. Right. Uh, and just so you know, Almost everyone at one point or another is going to lie well, in this you, game. You definitely want to lie, right? Because if you're trying to collect the most treasure cards, you don't want people to think you're trying to collect the treasure cards. So you might lie and pretend like you're, you know, firing the cannons when really you're doing the plunder action or trying to get some more of that treasure. And if you're hoping this ship is going to sink, you definitely want to lie and pretend like you're doing water. And that's where you kind of have to see what other people are doing and kind of judge or guess their actions. Because if I have a ton of treasure cards in my hand, I do not want the ship to sink. But if David tells me, and I got it under control, I have to wonder, do I want to go there just to confirm and make sure it happens? Because David might be lying to me. Yeah, You this, probably are lying to me This is at one that of those point. games. If you hear someone quickly say, I've got that under control. <laughs> oh, I'll fire the cannons for you. Don't you worry. You might want to be suspicious. This is a game of, of head games. And as soon as someone speaks, the very next thing is someone else going to go, mm-hmm, sure. <laughs> yeah, right, huh? When you resolve these things, a few different things can happen. When you resolve the bucket action, for example, you're effectively just going to take water from the bucket column. You can take any card there into your hand and then discard a card to the discard pile. Now, the water column is made up of all of the same cards that are in this deck. This deck feeds the water column and the treasure column, so there are some Clear water cards, which are effectively things that block up your hand, but there are also treasures, so you might get a treasure out of the water there. Yeah, and those treasures can either just be worth points at the end of the game, which whoever has the most is going to win if the ship survives, but they could also be action cards that will allow you to do special actions or benefit some of the actions you take during the game. So going for water can be really beneficial for you. Yeah, and that turn order is really interesting on the water in particular because whoever's last in turn order in the water bucket they're going to be able to take yeah. two cards from the column and then discard any two cards. So this is a way to get sort of the clear water out of your hand and more treasure in your hand uh, right there at the bucket. Now, the plunder is pretty straightforward, except for when you're dividing up the treasure. Yeah, I mean, it's super interesting because you have to divide it equally to the number of people that are there. But if you're the only one there, you get it all. Yeah. So in an example, like David said, you might want to pretend like you're coming to plunder. So other people go, well, he can't have all of that. I'm going to come over there. And then they're not doing an action maybe that was actually really beneficial. They've wasted their turn getting plunder. 
If too many people come to plunder, you're either only going to get a small amount of cards or potentially no cards at all. Because if more people come to plunder than the number of cards there, they just get discarded. So yeah. this is a huge aspect of bluffing, I think. Trying to pretend like you're not going to plunder and then you think you're the only one there and everybody reveals and everyone comes over there. Now nobody gets anything. Man, you, you probably should have done a better job reading the table and trying to guess what people are doing. But this can really start to stack up if people are avoiding the plunder because there's not enough cards. Eventually, it could be a really juicy stack. And if you're the one guy that manages to get all of them, that's really good for you. Yeah, there are limits to that stack. But the interesting thing about turn order on this one as well is no matter how many people are there, you're going to take one card at a time. So if there's three of us there and more yeah. than three cards, someone takes one, someone takes another, so on and so forth. So someone might end up with a few extra treasures and potentially their first yeah. pick. Then you've got the patch action. The patch action is going to let you do one of a couple things. You're going to go through this, and the first thing you do on the patch action, draw a card or discard a card. Right. This is an important distinction because if you want to just discard a card, this is a way to keep your hand size low. You can get rid of clear water. You could even get rid of treasure if you wanted. If you think the ship is going to sink, you really want to keep your hand size yeah, low. Yeah, that's, because when, that's when how you you're going to... Ditch all your cards. Get rid of them. <laughs> that's yeah. how you're going to win. But after that, you're going to use sort of your action there to either fix cannons or fix minor breaches. Now, most of these just take one hammer so you can fix a hammer and flip it over, or you can fix a minor breach. Yeah. Now, there are major breaches that might cost two hammers. When that's the case, and you're the first one resolving this, you can ask the other people at that spot, hey, can you, you want to use your hammer to help fix this major breach? So it injects a little bit more opportunity for conversation and discussion at the table. So if Ryan was going to do something else, now I'm really testing right. his metal and going, were you serious uh, about this? Because we could fix this major no. breach together. No, I don't want to fix the major breach. The other cool thing about this column is as the ship sinks, there are actually treasures in each level. There's tiles in each level. Yeah. And those are going to come out face down and they're going to be added to this column. One of the other ways you can use your hammers instead of repairing that, it's effectively another way to get benefits and abilities that you can use. These tiles are going to do a number of different things. They may do nothing, but in most cases, they're going to let you effectively succeed at keeping the ship afloat. Maybe fix yeah. some cannons, maybe fire two cannons instead of one, things like that. Yeah, they're all, everything you're doing at the, the, the patch section is useful. Uh, you've got to build the cannons because that's the only way you're going to fight the, the Kraken. This fire action really only becomes better as people are going here fixing these cannons. Yeah. Otherwise, you've only got one cannon. You're not really doing a lot with one cannon. You're rolling one, you're rolling one little die. die. <laughs> but the more of these cannons you add, the stronger that fire action is going to be. And some of these cannons are better and they just roll better dice and you can potentially do more damage to the Kraken. If you can do five damage to the Kraken, then you can survive. You don't sink anymore. And then the player that has the most treasure wins. So that player especially is very interested in getting those cannons repaired. Yeah, it is a very interesting game because the whole time you're kind of sitting there considering, well, you clearly want treasure, you're a pirate, but then as things sort of progress, you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, do I want all this treasure? Um, should I go to the treasure column or the plunder column and fake people out so they there go there? And instead, I go somewhere else and tank my turn <laughs> right. while all the while loading them down with more and more treasure. Well, it just it becomes like this, this race dynamic almost because if it becomes very clear that the ship is sinking, players are going to start just ditching their cards because they want to end with the l lowest amount of cards. But if you're if you have a plan, if you think maybe, you know what, I can actually... I can defeat the Kraken this turn. No one's going to expect it. Everyone's going to ditch their hand. And so I'm going to have the most, you know, victory points, the most treasure in my hand. Even if you didn't have much, if everyone else is ditching your hand, suddenly saving the ship becomes far more beneficial to you. And so you will often switch strategies multiple times during the game. And during the last couple rounds, when it's a really a nail biter, whether or not you're going to sink or stay afloat, it's anyone's guess which way a player is going to go with that. Exactly. Exactly, and there is some information that you can kind of keep closer to the vest. Like we said, there's a lot of public information. Obviously, the actions you're taking, the things that you're doing are going to sort of tell people at the table where you're at yeah. or where your headspace is. But a lot of the items in this that you get in Treasure, they're going to do some things that might be unexpected. So people might see one cannon here, but you might have some cards that make that better or add right. a cannon or do something like that so that on your turn when you go there, you might be doing a lot more damage or effectively potentially more damage to the monster 
than anyone else at the table might think you're capable of. Yeah, and those those big surprise moments are what this game is all about, right? Yeah. Because really that that reveal of and realizing, oh my gosh, like no one saved the water, no one bucketed this yeah. turn. And then you realize that you're done, like the ship is gonna sink and then it just becomes, okay, well who can ditch their cards fastest? Or maybe somebody surprises you and starts bailing water when you really didn't think they were. So those surprises I think are really what makes this game shine as far as like, you know, I love the good reveal. And I love that yeah. thinking someone's on your side the whole time and then they come with that last minute betrayal. Uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, the fact that this game has the two win conditions I think helps that a lot. A lot of, lot of semi-co-ops really just still have the one condition. Right. And then a lot of minor conditions for each player. This one is sort of an either or. So it has you torn the entire game trying to figure it out. And I did promise that we'd talk a little bit more about how the ship sinks. We're not going to go through it step by step. But it is a very cool process and it is has a major effect on the board. Yeah. As the ship sinks, you're going to take off the lowest level. You're going to add those two treasure tokens to the patch, making things a little sweeter on the patch mm -hmm. column. And then also you're going to wipe both the water and the treasure decks right here. Put them back into the discard, shuffle everything together, and effectively reset things. The other thing that can happen is if you've let breaches stay, those cards are going to clear, but you're going to get these permanent breach tokens, which effectively make it guaranteed yeah. you're going to have you taking on water. Lastly, you're going to flip the threshold card. This has a few different levels. This is the first level. Then you swap it out, and it's going to get worse and worse. More water cards yeah. are going to come out. Maybe more treasure cards as, as well. As water rises, more stuff's floating around that you can grab, <laughs> that's basically. True. Everything's come loose now. Here. But that's generally the overview of this game it's going to go until either the ship sinks or we defeat the monster and then it goes one of two ways on the victory and all the while it's very i have to say that's a cool component the I fact that the ship literally looks now that it's down inside the board is one of the coolest things i've seen yeah i do i do like that it's it's i like games with unique components and this is definitely a unique one i don't think i've ever seen anything Quite like no. this in the game. It's before. nice. For a first time publisher, it has a really nice design. The oh, artwork, for sure. I, personally, the artwork is right up my alley, and I love the way that ship is designed. If you have any other questions about the game at all, though, please make them in the comments below. We'll both get down there and try to answer what we can. Until next time, though, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.